You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Then take a tip from Mr. Paul Anka. To stop those monsters, one, two, three. Here's a fresh new way that's trouble free. It's got Paul Anka's guarantee. Guarantee void in Tennessee. Sing it with me. Just don't look. Just don't look. Just don't look. Just don't look. It sure did work. It takes away all their power. It takes away all their psychic power. The chat's saying strange things. I'm going to guess that they are actually watching the oaf say a speech. Oh, wait, this just in from the Associated Press. Breaking. President Trump says in inaugural address, when you open your heart to patriotism, there is no room for prejudice. Words to live by? Yeah, I don't think so. You're listening to The Morning Monarchy for Inauguration Madness Day, Friday, January 20th, 2017. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, giving you an hour-long look at the real news, remixed. And we reach our installment of Book Smarts. We are plugging in so many more features to your Morning Monarchy. We just had the inaugural edition of your Mary Jane Report this past week, and we're looking at monthly, monthly segments. Last Friday... We did Deep Focus. That's where we're going to look at film and television. That's going to be the second Friday of every month. Third Friday of every month, we're going to do Book Smarts. And I think it's, it's, it's perfect. Continuing where we left off last week, discussing suddenly Sinatra's original assassination film, we reach, of course, the inauguration day that brings America right back to the fractious times that we've seen before. Remember, my friends, past is prologue. Train to Kill, the inside story of CIA plots against Castro, Kennedy, and Shea. Written by Antonio Viciana with Carlos Harrison helping out. I've got an advanced e-copy of this, and let's look at the preface to Train to Kill. I don't know who killed John Kennedy. I know who wanted to. He was with the CIA. He introduced me to Lee Harvey Oswald in Dallas two months before JFK died. By then, he had already taught me to be an agent in Cuba. By then, I had already tried to kill Fidel Castro the first time. The man I knew as Maurice Bishop supplied the training, he supplied the money, he supplied the weapons. I found the men, I found the place. I failed. But I didn't give up. Neither did Bishop. The CIA has repeatedly denied that one of its highest-ranking officials used the cover name of Maurice Bishop. Confessing that David Atlee Phillips used that pseudonym would connect the agency, or at least one of its most important functionaries, with Oswald. And that, by extension, would link it to Kennedy's death. The very fact they do deny it proves to me they know something. There's no need for a cover-up when you're innocent. David Atlee Phillips rose to be the CIA's chief of Western Hemisphere operations. He hadn't reached that level yet when I met him, but he was clearly powerful. He could order Castro's death and supply the means to do it. When it came time to spirit me out of Cuba, he provided me with a job working for the United States government in Bolivia. But still, even there, my target was Castro. Again, the man I knew as Bishop, and years later by his real name, supplied the money. He supplied the intelligence. But I have no idea how he would have reacted if I had been caught when I smuggled the weapons he provided into Chile. I didn't tell him I had... Piled my three children and my wife into the car for the trip. For them, it was a vacation. For me, it was cover. What border guard would ever suspect a family on a road trip with three small children squealing excitedly and a young wife in the passenger seat? That was the first time I unthinkingly, perhaps selfishly or blindly, put my family's lives at risk in my zeal to kill Castro. It wasn't the last. Bishop knew I was responsible for the arsons that destroyed some of Havana's best-known department stores, which led to something I could never forgive myself for, the death of an innocent mother or two. Bishop knew I was the one responsible for sparking the mass exodus of thousands of Cuban children known as Operation Pedro Pan, disguised as orphans and with the help of the Catholic Church. Bishop knew I came close to collapsing Cuba's economy with a rumor campaign meant to sow panic. And even though I know there are those who suspect it was Bishop, not Castro, who hired the hitman who tried to pull a bullet in my head. And even though I know it might have been Bishop, not Castro, who set me up and sent me to prison, I defended him. 
When I was called before the House Committee investigating the Kennedy assassination, I said nothing. When I met him face to face in the hall outside a CIA luncheon, I said nothing. Now I will. I've been written about, I've been questioned. This is the first time I tell the story for myself, the whole story. Why now? In the past, I knew that Castro and others wouldn't hesitate to do away with their enemies by putting a bomb under their car. I was well aware of what would happen, what could happen, as I traveled with my wife and children. Now I'm old. My wife's gone. My children are grown. I've survived cancer and a heart attack. Now I can reveal the truth about my double life. My name is Antonio Viciana. I'm an accountant by training, a banker and a businessman by trade. Some call me a patriot. Some call me a terrorist. Only one I knew was a spy. Only one knew I was a spy. With a single mission. Destroy Castro. My CIA handler. The man I knew as Maurice Bishop. The man whom congressional investigators later identified as Master Spy David Atlee Phillips. The man whom I saw meeting with Lee Harvey Oswald in Dallas. The Select Committee on Assassinations will at this time come to order. The most damaging sealed documents of the House Select Committee on Assassinations accuse high-ranking officials of the Central Intelligence Agency of lying to the people of the United States about Lee Harvey Oswald. House investigators believe this man, David Atlee Phillips, met with Oswald two months before the assassination. Phillips was the CIA's chief of Western Hemisphere operations and was in charge, among other things, of plots against Fidel Castro. According to the secret reports, Antonio Viciana, a leader of anti-Castro Cubans directed by the CIA, saw Oswald talking to a senior CIA agent he knew by the cover name Maurice Bishop. Viciana provided enough information for House investigators to compile this sketch of the agent who met Oswald. Could it have been Phillips? Investigators believe it was. Phillips denied under oath that he knew Oswald, but House investigators did not believe him and wanted him charged with perjury. The government declined to prosecute, leaving investigators furious. The director of the CIA in 1963 was John McCone. He caused a sensation among committee staffers when he admitted there was an agent using the cover name Bishop. But a secret memo reveals he was allowed to reverse his testimony. A CIA lawyer wrote the committee. I should inform you that he had been in error. In summary, Mr. McCone withdraws his statements on this point. The man who fingered Maurice Bishop, Antonio Viciana, was shot in the head soon after testifying, but survived. Frightened, he will no longer talk about the case. We caught up with him in Florida. They wounded me in the, in the head. They tried to kill me. You know why? I don't know, perhaps the FBI knows. The FBI knows. Did they tell you? No. Actually, actually. David Adley Phillips died of cancer in 1988. Investigators believe Phillips was angry at JFK for botching the Cuban Bay of Pigs operation. Did you kill the president? The second explosive revelation in the sealed documents also links the CIA directly to Oswald. While living in Dallas, Oswald was befriended by Russian-born George de Morenshield. Investigators determined he was a contract agent for the CIA in Central America and the Caribbean. In 1977, moments before he was to be interviewed by House investigators, de Morenshield blew his brains out with a 20-gauge shotgun. House investigators believe he was a crucial link between the CIA and Lee Harvey Oswald. There is no question that the sealed JFK files are extremely embarrassing for the CIA. House investigators have told Inside Edition that the agency did not fully cooperate in their investigation and that the CIA had final say in the report that the House Assassinations Committee made public. Thus, the public report makes no mention of the CIA's links with Lee Harvey Oswald. But the secret documents are another story. One interesting sidelight, the movie JFK was partially based on Jim Garrison's investigation in New Orleans. Well, House investigators uncovered evidence that the CIA planted nine agents inside the Garrison investigation to feed him false information and to report back to Langley on what Garrison was finding out. That's Bill O'Reilly on Inside Edition way back in 1991 when the film JFK was brand new in theaters.
Antonio Viciana fought on the front lines of the CIA's decades-long secret war to destroy Fidel Castro, that bearded boogeyman who haunted America's Cold War dreams. It was a time of swirling intrigue involving U.S. spies with a license to kill, mafia hitmen, ruthless Cuban exiles, and the leaders in the crosshairs of all this dark plotting, Fidel Castro and John F. Kennedy. Viciana transformed himself from an asthmatic banker to a bomb-making mastermind who headed terrorist attacks in Havana and assassination attempts against Castro while building one of the era's most feared paramilitary groups, all under the direction of the CIA. In the end, Viciana became a threat, not just to Castro, but also to his CIA handler. Viciana was the man who knew too much. Suddenly he found himself a target, framed and sent to prison, and later shot in the head and left to die on a Miami street. When he was called before a congressional committee investigating the Kennedy assassination, Viciana held back, fearful of the consequences. He didn't reveal the identity of the CIA officer who directed him, the same agent Viciana observed, meeting with Lee Harvey Oswald in Dallas before the killing of JFK. Now, for the first time, Viciana tells all, detailing his role in the intricate Game of Thrones that aimed to topple world leaders and change the course of history. Trained to Kill, the inside story of CIA plots against Castro, Kennedy, and Shea. Written by Antonio Viciana, with help from Carlos Harrison, who is actually a lifelong Miami investigative journalist. It's probably likely he was nearby and reported on the initial assassination hit on Viciana. So now we include the links in this posting, Book Smarts, Trained to Kill. Not only to get the book on Amazon, and if you click the link that we provided for you, that can help support our work through the Monarchy Marketplace. You've also got the links to that Inside Edition video. You can also see Antonio Viciana and his entire presentation back in September 2014, Admissions and Revelations at AARC. I'll also include links to jfkfacts.org with an archive of resources and also the very important Black Op Radio. Now, I got into Black Op Radio back in the early 2000s before there was an explosion of alternative media. I found Black Op Radio the best education to go back into pre-9-11 parapolitics. It's all about JFK and Nixon and all of the nefarious characters that swirl all around that. Now, like all of these areas, there's a lot of wild goose chases and blind turns and misinformation. Yes, Mae Russell was damn close 45 years ago. Black Op Radio, that's not Josh Reeves. Black Op Radio is Lynn Osanic. It has been online for a long time, so long that I remember having to download real media files from them. So that's Book Smarts for you. Some of the other installments and some of the other books we're looking at, I've mentioned Britannia, the new Peter Milligan book out on Valiant. It is a strange and beautiful thing. It is very bizarre. It is about the Vestal Virgins. The other Book Smarts book we are looking at is a new musical comic or graphic album from an artist named Dave Chisholm. The book's coming out officially in May, and it's called Instrumental. And it's basically a graphic novel told the story about a band that comes with an album created by the artist and his band. So you can listen to the comic as you're reading along or read the album as you're... I don't know. You're listening to The Morning Monarchy for Friday, January 20th, 2017. I am James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Long live the king. I, hear, I, I do have it on good authority that the passengers of the Titanic are very happy. They've been reassured that a new captain just now took the helm. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.